Hello, my name is Ko Cohens. I'm a senior lecturer at Breda University, where I mainly do my research on sustainable urban tourism. And today I will talk about uh, slum tourism, ethics and urban development. Um, what am I going to talk about today? Start with a bit on what is slum tourism, and then the impacts of slum tourism, and then finally the role of slum tourism within the wider development in the city. Um, well, what is slum tourism and when did it start? Some people think that it's a relatively new development, uh, whereas in Victorian times already, wealthy people started visiting the East End in London. Um, these tours were often wrapped under the cloak of uh, central concern about welfare and, and helping impoverished residents of the uh, East End. But there might have also been some less noble intentions, um, because of course Victorian etiquette was very strict and slums provided a way out for this. You can also see that as time passed, uh, slumming became increasingly a leisure activity and this really came to the forefront uh, in the USA, um, where the lustful vice and interest in the immoral um, became much more important. And this continued on until more or less the Second World War. In the 1930s, um, possibly also due to prohibition, slum tourism really had a bit of a peak period. Um, and after the Second World War, slum tourism more or less dies out. We don't really know why it is, but it did. And it researched uh, in the 1980s, and then we see a difference. It's the rise of global slum tourism. So slum tourism is no longer local, but people from the global north start visiting economically impoverished areas in the global south. So you can see now this slight difference, but you can also see a rapid increase. Um, it's rapidly increased and slum tourism now takes place basically all over the world. Um, when we don't talk about what is a slum tourism? We need to better understand like, what is a slum. Let's start with that. Um, according to the United Nations definition, a slum is a heavily populated urban area which is characterized by substandard housing and squalor. Um, and if you look at this little picture in Mumbai, you can say, yes, that would fit. On the other hand, if you go to Cape Town, this is a, a very often visited township, and you don't really see the squalor here. It's there, but it's not necessarily visited. This is actually not even the wealthiest part of uh, this township. And then if you go to the most visited favela in Rio de Janeiro, you can also see that at the bottom, it just looks like a pretty standard suburb. There's even a McDonald's at the bottom of the hill at Rothina. Upwards, it becomes more like what you would expect, but this is still part of it. So what does that mean? Slums are diverse. They're diverse in their geography. So in different continents, slums are just different. Um, they have different histories, different stories. Um, but there's also within slums great distinctions, wealthier parts, poorer parts, and they tend to mostly all be visited. Um, so when you talk about slum tourism, you can say that it's tourism to geographic spaces of relative poverty, um, and that it opens up parts of those spaces. But what it opens up is only a limited area. You tend to go to the safe areas. Uh, and the areas that are perceived as interesting by the people making the tours, so the tour operator or the tour guide. If you see the evolution of slum tourism over time, you can see that initially um, the tours used coaches or minibuses or other vehicles, where residents really looked out of the window and gazed down more or less on residents. Uh, on the basis of those forms of tourism, uh, the early reporting on slum tourism was very negative. Uh, is it voyeurism, poverty porn, exploitation? You can see the debate was really like, should we go, or should we not go? Um, based on this discussion, um, slum tours have evolved. You can see that nowadays most tours include an element of a walking tour or some interaction um, with residents. When you have to say that that interaction is limited, mostly due to language problems, and it tends to always go via tour guides. Not always, but mostly. Um, if you look what kind of products are there, it tends to be pretty well all encompassing. You have a guided tour, often an emphasis on local life. Um, you see some performances, you can buy some crafts, eat some local food, and you can even sleep overnight. Um, actually, Airbnbs in slums tend to be on the rise. So it seems to be that that is developing. But even though a lot of different products are uh, there, they all are relatively similar. Um, the tours tend to have a narrative of entrepreneurialism, laboriousness, uh, overcoming of past issues, um, and it's all about this, this progress from where we were to where we are now. It's a relatively positive message. It's a deliberately positive message 
to um, overcome some of the stigmas, as I will tell later. Um, but you can also see it, for example, with um, the accommodation, which is also fairly similar, and the restaurants also fairly similar. With these developments, you can see that um, the debate over slum tourism has become more nuanced. Um, actually, some tour operators have even started winning awards to reduce poverty, which is actually quite interesting. But to really understand and get a clearer perspective of the way in which slum tourism relates to a destination, I will next discuss uh, the economic and social impacts of slum tourism. Starting with the economic impact, you can see economic gain is definitely there but it's not to the extent that may be expected by local governments or that is being told by stakeholders with a vested interest. Um, undoubtedly, some money stays in the visited slums um, and it provides options for people with limited official qualifications and limited networks, a lot of newcomers who come to the slums. Uh, however, these opportunities are limited and most uh, income from um, slum tourism goes to large tour operators or relatively large tour operators from outside of the slum. What is left for the local businesses, local entrepreneurs, are the scraps. Uh, and there's many, many small businesses fighting over it. It's a hyper-competitive market with brutal competition. Um, one could say, hmm, this is so the external tour operators then are not good for slum tourism. However, it's a bit more nuanced because when you talk to tour guides, Often they say, we like to work for the larger tour operators because they pay their staff better. And this tends to be um, most likely due to closer government scrutiny. Um, so it's not entirely black and white. The intense competition that I spoke about earlier limits innovation and community development as well. Um, because it's so competitive, uh, investing time and resources in new products and community development may not pay off. It's a risk. And in this, competition, in this competitive environment, it may not pay off to take those risks. Better off copying what is there, um, which of course, why so many products are the same. Another element, which is good to take into account, is that tourism is often used in a diversification strategy by residents. Um, so it's not that they are going for full profit. The entrepreneurs tend to have other jobs as well. Moving on to social impacts. Um, in fact, one of the most profound benefits of um, slum tourism are social impacts, is the empowerment of economically impoverished residents with limited social political power. Um, it can help overcome the stigma associated with areas, hence the positive narratives. Um, slums tend to be ignored uh, a lot by local elites and to then be visited by people from abroad really can give a boost to self-confidence um, and change one's perception of uh, that area and change the perception of the world in that area. Um, and that can install pride into residents. And finally, slum tourism is said to be also contributing to safety in the areas that are visited. This is limited to the areas that are visited, um, but still it is there. If you look at the social impact, you do also see uh, certain slightly less positive things. I mean, the overtly positive representation and the narrative, one can ask, is that a realistic image of the slum that is visited? These are economically impoverished areas where it is not necessarily easy to make a living. Are the tours giving a realistic perspective? Or is it just a showcase to make tourists feel happy and feel good? And this relates to the fact that current tourism practices start from the interest of the tourist, not so much the residents. So it starts with what would tourists find interesting according to the tour operators and the tour guides, rather than what do I want to show of my locality. Uh, another issue that is there um, still is the privacy of residents. And with social media, this um, has only become worse because more and more photos, of course, instantly on social media. Um, one can also ask, does the tour guide represent the residents or do they represent someone else? And this then really all adds up into a question of like, who benefits? Is slum tourism still just a commercialization of poverty or are the benefits outweighing the negatives? And if you combine did that, this then with the intense competition that is there, there is a big risk of having a race to the bottom in which the ethical entrepreneurs will struggle. There's always going to be certain tourists that just want to take photos of whoever they want, enter 
houses whenever they want and truly invade people's privacy. Um, and this can actually make it more difficult for ethical entrepreneurs to make a good living. Some concluding thoughts, and I'm placing uh, slum tourism in the context of SDG 11. Um, if you look at the way in which slum tourism uh, impacts on human settlements, uh, I think it's really important to focus on the fact that it's embedded in its locality. These are economically impoverished areas, limited opportunities, little regulation, um, great economic competition and many newcomers. That sets the scene for the possibilities that are there within slum tourism and that also impacts on the way that slum tourism is practiced. Uh, and slum tourism certainly can help with certain issues in the slum, but it's not a panacea and it does have disadvantages. And if you want to truly make slum tourism sustainable, we need to better understand its role in the wider system, in the wider slum. And I think it's important to not shy away from power relations and systematic inequalities. They are there in the system and they need to be dealt with. We cannot plaster over the cracks just with tourism. Um, and to do that, it's necessary to understand what's truly going on. And this is an element that cannot be expected by visitors because visitors tend to have five, 10, maybe 15 minutes to decide which tour they want to take. And of course, on paper, everybody looks ethical. So to actually deal with this, regulation seems to be more effective as observed with the larger tour operators who appear to be uh, treating their staff better already. Um, if we want to make slum tourism more ethical, it's also important to stimulate inclusiveness um, by incorporating local narratives. And this means asking residents, what do you see as an interesting location? What do you want to talk about? This will also inevitably increase product diversification and more localized products. And it can also help to support residents on how to engage with tourism, not helping or suggesting that they all start a new business, but existing businesses, how do you engage with the tourism industry? Um, that truly can also make a difference. A final note, um, I know that I'm talking about slum tourism here, um, but I do find it very interesting that slum tourism is such a controversial form of tourism. Um, I completely understand uh, it's an extreme form of tourism. Wealthy international visitors now start to visit impoverished urban areas with no typical tourism attractions. Um, but I do think that the issues that are there are fairly similar also for other tourism destinations. For example, the fact that um, the local experience has become the tourist attraction now is observable in many urban destinations where there are no more typical tourist attractions, but also a lot of spots of tourists go to um, just interesting suburbs. And what you see there, if tourism in one of those suburbs with limited amount of attractions suddenly rises, um, you see, you hear about issues, and this is also feeding into the trend of over-tourism that we hear. So you can see that um, the lessons learned from slum tourism may actually help us uh, better understand and deal with tourism issues in a wider sense. I hope this, uh, this talk was interesting for you. Thank you very much.